Hello there, welcome to CXC Math TV. Today we will be looking at vectors. Vectors, this is a topic in section 10 of the CSEC Mathematics syllabus. So the first thing we need to ask ourselves is what is a vector? Now, before we understand what is a vector, there are two types of quantities. There's what is known as a vector quantity and a scalar quantity. A vector quantity is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction, whereas a scalar quantity is a quantity that only has magnitude. Examples of vector quantities are velocity and displacement. Velocity is the speed that you're going in a particular direction and displacement is the distance you're covering in a particular direction. Whereas hey. examples of scalar are just speed and distance. Speed and distance only have a magnitude. Now we're going to focus only on the vector quantities, but vectors are represented a particular way. A vector is represented by a straight line with an arrow. The arrow represents the direction and the length of the line represents the magnitude or the size of the vector. So let's put a line right here and put some points on the vector. And let's put the point PQ. All right. And so the vector PQ, it's going in the direction going from P to Q. And so we call that vector PQ. So the end point of the vector is how we use to refer to the vector. So let's go over here now to the right side of the screen. And we put another line on the screen. And you can see that the arrow is going downwards from the point P to Q. That vector we can call it U. Ah. And U would be equal to vector PQ. So the key takeaway is that the vector direction is important in naming the vector. We always go from the starting position to the ending position. That's how we name the vector. Now, the next thing is there is something known as resultant vector. A resultant vector is that single vector that is produced as a result of adding or subtracting more than one vector. So consider the three points here, A, B, and C. So we put the points on the diagram right here, going from A to B, then we go from B to C. Now, going A to B by vector AB and then going B to C by vector BC is equivalent to just go straight across from A to C. Ah. This vector going across from A to C is known as the resultant vector. That is the resultant vector. So in this case, we say AC is the resultant vector of AB and BC. So in other words, we would say that going from A to C is equal to going from A to B plus going from B to C. Now it's important to note that the length of AC is not equal to the length of AB plus the length of BC. Notice if we take off the arrow in white, what we have right there is the length equation. If we take off the arrow, that statement is not true. But if we put the arrow there, then we're talking about the direction, and then that statement will be true. The next thing to talk about is what is known as equal vectors. Two vectors are equal when they have equal magnitude and equal direction. They don't have to be in the same location. For example, let's say we have a line right here, which is going from point A to point B. So that's vector AB. And we have another line going from C to D. But if you notice, both of them are slanted the same way. Arrows going the same way, meaning they have equal length because the length of the yellow line and the red line are the same. And also, the arrow indicates that they're going in the same direction. In this case, we say that vector AB is equal to vector CD. Those are equal vectors. The next thing to talk about is inverse vectors. Inverse vectors, they have equal magnitude, but they are going in the opposite direction. So for example, let's look at this diagram here. We're going from A to B, and in the next diagram, we're going from C to D. We notice that these two vectors have the same length, but they're going in the opposite direction. So in this case, we'll say that AB is the inverse vector of vector CD. All right. 
And in other words, we can say vector AB is equal to negative vector CD. Ah. All right. So let us utilize all that we've looked at in vectors so far in a question. So in the diagram, OA is equal to 2A, vector OB is equal to 3A minus 2B, and vector OC is equal to 5A minus 6B. Express in terms of A and B the following, vector AB and vector BC. All right, so to do this question, remember we looked at resultant vector. Going from vector A to vector B, we can go from A to O, then from O to B. And so AB is equal to minus OA plus OB because going from A to O, the inverse vector would be going O to A. So we write AO as minus OA because of inverse vectors. Ah. So now vector AB is going to be minus OA becomes minus 2A plus OB. And OB was 3A minus 2B. Adding like terms, we get vector AB is A minus 2B. So going from vector A to B is just A minus 2B. The second one, going from vector B to C. Going from vector B to C, we can go from vector B to O and then vector O to C. Using inverse vectors, BO is the same as minus OB. So BC is minus OB plus OC. Now from the question, OB is 3A minus 2B and OC is 5A minus 6B. So substituting... And simplifying, we get vector BC is minus 3A minus 2B plus 5A minus 6B. So vector BC simplifies to be 2A minus 8B. That would be the resultant vector of going from vector B to vector C. Nice. Okay. Let's step up the level of difficulty for this question. So I want you to pause and attempt. It says OABC is a parallelogram. D is the midpoint of CB, H is the midpoint of OD, and OE is equal to two thirds of OC. Vector OA is A and vector OC is C. Express in terms of A and C, vector OD, vector AE, and vector HE. <laughs> Vector OD, we need to go from O to D. To go from O to D, we can go from O to C, then from C to D. Now, remember this is a parallelogram. So let's start by what do we know about parallelogram, the properties of parallelogram. If it is a parallelogram, it have two pair of parallel sides. So OA is A, and so CB is also A. They're going to have same direction. Right? Notice that they're in the black color, the length of their line, and they're also going to be going in the same direction. The red lines now going from O to C is C, and so going from A to B is also C. Because parallelograms have what? Two pair of parallel sides. So they're going in the same direction as well. Alright, so that's why you see two arrows there on A, B, and O, C, indicating that those two are going in the similar direction. So now what we can say now is that since OD is going to be going from O to C plus going from C to D, OD is then going to be equal to C plus a half of A. Why a half of A? Because CD is a half of BC. So if BC is A, a half of BC is going to be a half of A. Alright? And so OD is C plus a half A. The second one, vector AE. To go from A to E, we can go from A to O and then from O to E. But AO is equivalent to minus OA plus OE they gave us is two thirds of OC. So AE is just minus A plus two thirds of C. Easy. Nice. Now, the final one is vector HE. Going from vector H to vector E is going from H to O, then from O to E. So that is HO 
plus OE. But HO is minus OH because inverse vectors plus 2 over 3 OC. So it's going to be minus, but they told us that H is the midpoint of OD. So it's minus a half of OD because OH is a half of OD plus 2 thirds OC. So now we can substitute what we already found for OD. So H is now minus a half in bracket, a half OD, which is C plus a half A plus two thirds of C. Expanding and simplifying, H is minus a half C minus a quarter A plus two thirds C. So H E works out to be a quarter C minus. And so H E works out to be one over six C minus a quarter a that is going from vector h to vector e nice <laughs> all right so that wraps up our first video on vectors so we just need to review what are vectors we need to talk about resultant vectors we need to review inverse vectors and equal vectors and practice many more questions applying all of these. Remember, the best way to understand mathematics is by practicing.